This is Le Petit Prince, chapter four. <clears throat> that was how I learned a second very important thing, which was that the planet he came from was hardly bigger than a house. That couldn't surprise me much. I knew very well that except for the huge planets like Earth, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, which had been given names, there were hundreds of others that were sometimes so small that it's very difficult to see them through a telescope. When an astronomer discovers one of them, he gives it a number instead of a name. For instance, he would call it Asteroid 325. I have serious reasons to believe that the planet the little prince came from is asteroid B612. This asteroid had been sighted only once by telescope in 1909 by a Turkish astronomer who had then made a formal demonstration of his discovery at an International Astronomical Congress. But no one had believed him on the account of the way he was dressed. Grown-ups are like that. Fortunately for the reputation of asteroid B612, a Turkish dictator ordered his people, on pain of death, to wear European dress. The astronomer repeated his demonstration in 1920, wearing a very elegant suit, and this time everyone believed him. See, here, is, here he is in his Turkish robes, when no one believed him, and here he is in a suit when everyone believed him. If I've told you these details about asteroid B612, and if I've given you its number, it is on account of the grown-ups. Grown-ups like numbers. When you tell them about a new friend, they never ask questions about what really matters. They never ask, what does his voice sound like? What games does he like best? Does he collect butterflies? They ask, how old is he? How many brothers does he have? How much does he weigh? How much money does his father make? Only then do they, know, do they think they know him. If you tell grown-ups, I saw a beautiful red brick house with geraniums at the windows and doves on the roof, they won't be able to imagine such a house. You have to tell them, I saw a house worth a hundred thousand francs. Then they exclaim, what a pretty house. Here's the Petit Ponce on asteroid B612. So if you tell them, the proof of the little prince's existence is that he was delightful, that he laughed, and that he wanted a sheep. When someone wants a sheep, that proves he exists. They shrug their shoulders and treat you like a child. But if you tell them, the planet he came from is asteroid B612, then they'll be convinced and they won't bother you with their questions. That's the way they are. You must not hold it against them. Children should be very understanding of grown-ups. But of course, those of us who understand life couldn't care less about numbers. I should have liked to begin this story like a fairy tale. I should have liked to say, once upon a time, there was a little prince who lived on a planet hardly bigger than he was, and who needed a friend. For those who understand life, that would sound much truer. The fact is, I don't want my book to be taken lightly. Telling these memories is so painful for me. It's already been six years since my friend went away, taking his sheep with him. If I try to describe him here, it's so I won't forget him. It's sad to remember a friend. Not everyone has had a friend. And I might become like the grown-ups who are no longer interested in anything but numbers. Which is still another reason why I've bought a box of paints and some pencils. It's hard to go back to drawing, but at my age, when you've never made any attempts since the one of a boa from the inside and the one of a boa from the outside at the age of six, I'll certainly try to make my portraits as true to life as possible, but I'm not entirely sure of succeeding. One drawing works, and the next no longer bears any resemblance. And I'm a little off on his height, too. In this one, the little prince is too tall, and here he is too short. 
I'm uncertain about the color of his suit. So I grope in one direction and another as best as I can. In the end, I'm sure to get certain more important details wrong. But here you'll have to forgive me. My friend never explained anything. Perhaps he thought I was like himself. But I unfortunately cannot see a sheep through the sides of a crate. I may be a little like the grown-ups. I must have grown old.